Hi all, welcome to Hi, welcome to Couch Connect. My name is Arvind Jade. I'm an architect leader at uh, Nielsen. Me along with Govind are going to present uh, Unleash the Power of Couchbase through Nickel. Um, quick agenda slide. I'm just going to give a quick spiel of Nielsen. Where we work at, we work at Answers on Demand. Uh, why we chose uh, NoSQL, uh, Couchbase use models, and then Govind's going to walk us through some uh, interesting views and uh, Nickel use cases. About Nielsen, I don't want to mess up our mission statement. I'm just going to read verbatim. Um, we are a leading global information measurement company that enables companies to understand consumers and consumer behavior. Uh, how many show of hands, how many of you have heard of Nielsen? Probably the Nielsen TV ratings, right? Probably. Uh, so we are actually in the business of measuring uh, uh, watch and as well as the buy side. Uh, and we represent from the buy side. We measure consumer insights, basically what you're buying uh, at stores and things like that. Uh, that's actually our bigger part of the business. I think we're pretty much in every continent except Antarctica. Uh, I'm sure we'll get there soon. So in, traditionally, uh, we, you know, the measurement channels have been TV, uh, media, and radio. In the last 15 or 20 years, uh, there's been a, a exponential increase in the data channels, so we're constantly innovating to capture all the data to give meaningful insight to the con uh, consumers. Just a little bit of answers on demand platform. Uh, it's a big data reporting platform on consumer insights. Uh, this just gives us a, a, just a scale of what kind of data we're dealing with. We kind of process uh, 175 billion uh, records of scan data per uh, week, and uh, a little less uh, uh, volume of data in the panel space. Total volume of data, we have about 1.5 petabytes of scan data that we re report against. And we have a pretty healthy monthly usage of reports. We have a very active uh, uh, platform, reporting platform. The next slide shows a kind of a brief overview of our answers of demand uh, platform. Uh, the kind of data we feed to our platform is uh, point of sales data, your basket data when you come from, uh, uh, when you check out from the retail store, and as well as loyalty card data when you swipe, you, you know, your card in Safeway or Albertson. We, we, we gather that data and feed that to our platform. The power of our platform is basically we do aggregations on the fly. All data is captured at a, a disaggregated level. So it's, to the end user, it feels like a virtual cube that there's a custom cube built for them, but actually it's, we do aggregation on the fly. We're able to get uh, uh, these kind of uh, performance by using uh, uh, the power of IBM uh, Netezza. None of the uh, BI tools out there could fit our needs, so we went ahead and built our own proprietary BI layer. Uh, our front end is actually written on top of Sencha, EXCJS. All our reporting uh, metadata is stored in Couchbase. We heavily rely on Couchbase for uh, storing all of that data and provide meaningful insights. Govin's gonna probably walk us through some of those use cases. Uh, and we leverage Elasticsearch uh, search for a lot of our analytics, as well as our global search capabilities. We report out to our, you know, our users come from desktops, mobiles, and tablets. Uh, all our reports are uh, delivered to all kinds of platforms. Just to point out, uh, highlighting Couchbase and Elastic are NoSQL uh, uh, data stores, uh, along with our traditional relational databases. You know, we we have a pretty big presence of uh, Couchbase and Elasticsearch. Uh, what you don't okay, that is, and all our uh, reporting data is all stored in NetEase. Just a sampling of how our application looks. Uh, this is where it, this is called the report builder. This is where users come in to build their reports. Um, and this is the report player. Basically, the uh, end run report uh, you know, looks something like this. 
it's pretty advanced, you know, it's uh, home built, uh, it's Visivig, you know, a lot of drag and drops and a lot of cool features built in. So our data selector application, um, all this metadata is stored in Couchbase and we directly feed uh, data from Couchbase straight to the UI. So that's another advantage we have of using Couchbase. Uh, no transformations and things like that. So um, this is where users come in and make their selections. So where were we? So, and how we you know, chose Couchbase? I'll just give you a brief journey. Uh, about three or four years back, we went through a massive growth. We had a lot of different teams uh, building a lot of different components in our huge platform. And at the end of it, you know, pretty much our expression looked like how it looked in the, you know, how the kid's expression is. We were like, what the hell just happened here, you know? Uh, we were looking at uh, growth challenges. We were stuck in the vertical scaling paradigm. Uh, relation fatigue, so what does that mean? So if you guys are using relational uh, databases to store your uh, schemas and stuff like that, you probably know you have to go through a lot of conversion and uh, probably re-architect your application uh, because now you have a different schema. Caching is one thing that each of different components implemented their own caching uh, uh, layer. Some were using EHCache, some were using memcache. There was nothing uh, unified across the platform. No unified analytics, what does that mean? Uh, so if we had to report, if we wanted to get insights into the platform, we pretty much had to go uh, report against each of these uh, you know, crazy jigsaw puzzles and kind of stitch them up in a different BI layer and present that. That was a huge challenge uh, when we were starting to scale out. We were spending a lot of time trying to get uh, analytics out from this platform. And ad hoc querying capabilities, like an analyst couldn't go out there and uh, randomly query into the platform and see what, if he was looking for a particular uh, data point from, from two different uh, applications inside the platform, there was no capability to, to do that. So we kind of looked at all these problems about three or four years back, and then we said uh, we wanted to lay out uh, uh, what we needed to kind of to see where we wanted to go. So what were our wants and needs? We're an agile shop, so we wanted to have a platform where we can churn out features and and have the infrastructure and the backend components be easily adapt to those changes and releases. Uh, like I mentioned, we were stuck in a vertical scaling paradigm. So, uh, you know, it, it basically meant buying really expensive hardware just to be able to scale uh, more for our increasing client demands. Performance, uh, we wanted to keep the same level of performance that our users were used to. Uh, so, it basically meant that we had to buy these huge vertical stacks if we wanted to get the same level of performance. And ability to run analytics on top of data that's already sitting out there. We didn't want to keep uh, shipping data in and out of our platform just to get analytics out. Of course, this is one thing, you know, uh, management is going to say, oh, yeah, these five things are great, but, you know, are we going to spend uh, $20 million getting there? So why NoSQL and why uh, Couchbase? So Couchbase supports uh, uh, JSON, and that's what we were looking at, uh, schema-less kind of uh, representation for all our metadata layer. Uh, we were able to have different versions of our application running at the same time, uh, just by managing, inherently Couchbase can support those uh, document types within the same bucket. So uh, it was a no-brainer in that, in that case. Horizontal scaling, if uh, the load goes up, we are able to add more nodes, and you know, we're able to scale, uh, rebalance and scale, so it was not a big problem. Couchbase was able to keep the same level of performance even with adding these extra nodes, uh, and we've seen that uh, from the time we've gone live. So with the power of uh, incremental MapReduce and now Nickel, we are able to really get deep uh, analytics from our platform. And uh, Govin's going to uh, demonstrate some of those capabilities in the uh, coming slides. 
cost. And we can run uh, Couchbase on commodity hardware, add data nodes, and with the new 4.0 features, you know, we can keep uh, querying and data nodes separate, and I think that's a huge win for us as well. Now I'm going to hand over to Govind, who's going to run us through our um, Couchbase uh, journey, and as well as some of the use cases of how we use Couchbase. Obviously, we like the product. So we went from there to a small footprint of a client in our uh, uh, production setup. Um, it, was, it was largely, it, it went pretty well. And then we upgraded from there to a 251 uh, uh, version of uh, Couchbase, where we expanded our four node cluster uh, to a 16 node uh, cluster across multiple data center. We used advanced views capability that I'll, I'll show you in, in, in a bit. Uh, we use the power of uh, uh, Elasticsearch to perform unified uh, analytics on top of uh, the data that, that sits in uh, uh, Couchbase and Couchbase indices. Um, starting this year, we, we started off well with uh, um, actually beta testing Nickel, and we looked to upgrade to Couchbase 4 to take the multidimensional uh, scaling uh, advantage and also use Couchbase for our uh, ad hoc querying capability. We also look to do a Couchbase Lite for uh, mobile prototyping. So Arvind walked you through our uh, BI analytical engine. So all the uh, users, our clients, typically come into our system. They build uh, reports, uh, and they use like uh, the selection model, the data selector application, to go in and uh, uh, create selections, and purchase that in um, Couch database. So, for us, uh, uh, a, a very high throughput is, is very important for, because it's a live application when, when clients come in and, and use it. So we, that's one of our um, primary uh, use cases where we build the data set within, within Couch. The, the building of a reverse index is one of our key return on investment on what we put in, in Couch. So the documents that we create, the selections and the report definitions that we build and persist within Couch, we wanted to introspect that data. So we wanted, to be, we wanted to have an ability to go in and uh, need be look at what the metadata is, get the um, metrics of what kind of selections that the client use and what kind of chart types they do when they do the report definition. So we wanted a capability to be able to use, uh, um, to basically introspect the data, that the documents that we put in. I'll walk you through a, a data refresh scenario where um, the ability to create incremental map reduce comes in very, very handy for us. For unified analytics, so we have data, we build the incremental uh, index. Now we want to take advantage of the, the data and push that into um, an aggregation engine like Elastic and take advantage of um, uh, the product called Kibana where we can um, build good uh, dashboarding capability for the, for the metrics. So that's our third use case. And from there, we wanted to have a capability to do uh, querying on the fly, ability to go in and uh, do a SQL-like uh, uh, scenario where you can go in and type uh, like what, what uh, we have in a relational paradigm, relational database paradigm, ability to do the same SQLs in a, in a NoSQL world. So we're going to deep dive a little bit on all of these four usage models and how we use uh, Couch and intend to use with, with uh, Nickel. So the first use case, like, uh, like I earlier mentioned, it's a document store. What you see here is our um, data, um, data selector application where in the right, right side of the um, right summary pane, you see where users come in and make a selection. These selections are persisted as um, JSON documents, as you see here, and we persist that in Couchbase bucket. So it's a, it's a live system. Uh, clients would come in and uh, either make selections across multiple dimensions, like uh, product periods, markets, and facts. And uh, once they make a selection, they go into our builder uh, tool where they actually go in and 
build uh, their reports. They drag and drop these selections. They build, uh, they, you know, like Arvind mentioned, you can drag and drop all these fancy chart objects on it, and then we, we build a JSON model out of uh, user selection and persist it um, in a couch bucket. So the second use, is, use case is the incremental map reduce. Now that we have the user um, selections in the layout and the bucket, um, Nielsen is a data company. So the backend system goes through data changes quite periodically. So in a, in a scenario like a user went and created a report and he put a bunch of objects, um, um, uh, data points like alcohol, liquor, vodka, these are users' individual selections and users can go in and create favorite reports and uh, all multiple kinds of reports using that. When the data refresh happens in the back end, um, let's say vodka changes to Russian vodka. A change, a change like that could potentially break, the, break client's report. So our clients uh, like get their data refreshed periodically. So when, when a change like this happens, we wanted uh, to collect the delta from the back end and keep the client front end reports to be agnostic of any of these changes. For that, we, we take advantage of the incremental map reduce capability, statically identify upfront what, are, what attributes are potentially subject to change, and um, emit those attributes. So we, we need to know within the documents where all we have the data and metadata footprint, identify them, and what you see here is the, the emit um, function that we use every time a document goes in, the emit kicks in and um, builds the footprint of the index that you can restfully query and uh, identify. So um, a delta change, like I mentioned before, vodka changing to Russian vodka, we could go in and find, give me the list of documents that has a footprint of the metadata vodka. We'd be able to get those documents and then uh, make those changes uh, pretty quickly. A third use case is the unified analytics. Now that we have these indices, we know the kind of selections that uh, our clients have made. We want to take advantage and give them those metrics. Like, like if they want to know what are my top 10 facts, we can go into our reports and be able to find out here are your top 10 facts that you've used across clients, across data scopes, and whatnot. So how do we do that? We, we have um, um, documents and indices in Couch. We have our uh, audit reports where when client report audit metadata stored in, uh, in our relational tables. And we have our uh, um, um, log data in, in our app service. We, we built a custom connector and built a unified model with all these data and push them into Couch to take advantage of the uh, Kibana, the aggregation engine uh, with dashboarding features and whatnot. Um, the key here is our request instance and the report spec model is nested at a very, uh, very high level. So the, the document, like depending on the client needs, some client might choose to have a selection at three or four level. Certain clients can choose their hierarchy structure at 20, 25 levels. So we wanted to have um, a recursive parsing of this JSON document and be able to build these selection indices on the fly. So that's the key that the power of uh, the views, advanced views that we use, gives us the capability to sort of traverse the document and spit out these selections and be able to query using them. As I show you the demo, I'll walk you through the model and, and you'll be able to appreciate what, what the nesting structure that I'm talking about. Quick uh, metrics, we have uh, about uh, 1.4 billion uh, reporting data points, three terabytes of um, index size, and um, five terabytes of uh, application log. Um, a quick slide to show that um, we, we get data from mul multiple uh, sources. We uh, build a unified model. We push it into uh, um, Elastic and use the um, uh, Kibana as aggregation engine to show the, show the dashboard. Next use cases are uh, uh, ad hoc querying capability. Now we have data um, uh, everywhere. Our, the challenge is, like I mentioned, we had to identify upfront statically what portion or what sections of the document could potentially be changed. So when, it, when you have an ad hoc querying capability, you, you have an ability to just run a SQL query and, and introspect any section of the document. That's, that's where um, um, Nickel comes in very handy for us. So a um, couple of months before, I think, we, we, start, we started working with, the, um, uh, with Couch for the, for the beta testing initiative. And um, um, we, I, I'll show you in a demo real quick uh, what these uh, 
uh, how we are able to derive metrics and quantify impact and uh, um, identify the um, JSON updates. So I'll switch over to So this is, this is our uh, um, uh, cluster that we have been doing our uh, beta testing against. This is Couch 4.0. Um, we've been uh, playing around with the Nickel product since last uh, two months, like, I've been, like I said. Um, we basically took our test data uh, buckets from the test uh, uh, internal test environment, and we pushed it into these EC2 uh, instances. And, um, um, as you can see that uh, the multidimensional uh, scaling with the data nodes, query node, and the, and the index node being separated here. Um, I want to zoom through some of these and uh, go through the actual uh, sequels that we've been working on. Um, these are some of our sample buckets. We, uh, a small snapshot of our data from our test environment um, on the view. So before I go further, let me quickly show the the nesting structure that I mentioned. So this is a sample um, user selection, which has uh, uh, a prompts on the data set as, uh, as a selection information. So you, ca you can see that uh, the nesting level here can, can go, um, it, it's, it, it cannot be determined upfront. Depending on the client's need, they can go in and configure a level, and you can see the document can traverse. So we don't know at any point at what all points we have uh, selection metadata buried within. So we have to go down and traverse the document, and as we come across a need for, um, uh, as we come across a, an attribute that actually holds um, a dynamic data, we take that and emit it. So I want to show, um, this is our uh, MapReduce uh, view that we use to basically, against multiple the selections and the layout bucket on the document, we, we, we've created this view, which basically does um, a, high, a, a large amount of emits. So per document, we could have selections anywhere between um, 50, somewhere about 500, even 1,000 different selections buried within the JSON doc. So we, we have uh, this incremental map reduce basically parses every time um, the, uh, you put a document in the bucket, it basically parses that and, and spits it out. So, we have a very high IO, uh, IO operation here because we have multiple writes per document. We move to uh, an SSD uh, storage to take advantage of uh, um, quick reads and uh, uh, writes in this case. So the, the MapReduce here basically emits a bunch of uh, attributes that are part of the document and, and from there will be able to query. So when I come back and pick, um, uh, these are my key sets, um, I, I, sh I can take these and query to say these are my document IDs to be able to identify the document based on the, the index footprint that got created. So I wanted to show some of the uh, querying capability that we've been uh, uh, playing around with. So now that we have uh, the, the data in, uh, A simple use case, say when, when, when a user comes in and creates a report, I want to know from, from a specific client or client, from the client side or internal to Nielsen, so I want to go find out what are the documents that are created by a specific uh, user. So um, I, I can go in and, and run a simple um, a SQL-like query where I can go in and uh, identify the attributes that I, that I want to emit, what the user is and what the kind of uh, reports that he has created. Um, from, um, uh, from a bucket uh, providing the filter condition. So this is a simple use case, a select use case that I can go in and find. You can get uh, fancy with it. You could, you could go in and say, give me all the reports built by client as of today in, in, the, you know, in day parts. You, you can go in and do all kinds of uh, querying. So the second um, query that um, I wanted to walk through is, uh, it's a scenario where you wanted to find, as of today, give me by client, uh, in, in case of like a, um, up in an operation where you want to do a group by by a specific client. Uh -huh. Oh. 
Oh, thank you. Oh, can you see it better now? So this is like a, 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 a group by and an order by together in a, in, a, in a query to be able to find out what, what are my, you know, what are my um, uh, by client give me like a breakup of how many um, reports that were run during, during the day today. And we could go in and, and the reports can be of multiple, ty multiple types. We could do like, a, um, like a, an object type of, uh, of a favorite on it. She could go down a further uh, slice and dice that output. Um, basically, uh, in, in uh, Nicholas, um, uh, this um, interface basically takes in the query. It's a REST API call that that uh, um, that it goes to the server, and and we get back like a, um, a JSON uh, format response. So this is another uh, uh, query across a different bucket. This time, it's against our uh, report definition bucket um, to find out like give me the kinds of uh, um, chart types that uh, clients are using. So when we roll out features like, uh, like a newer uh, uh, feature, like when we put in um, a, a smart text or a page container, a, a newer type of uh, chart when we put in, um, we, want, we wanted to know what the client adoption rate is. So we released a new feature, a new chart type. Um, you know, how often do clients go in and choose such, uh, such kind of uh, uh, report. So we, we're able to do it instantly. Go in and op, uh, on a day, day basis, or we, we can go in and find out um, what those, uh, what the client adoption for a certain feature is. So we're getting into a, um, a, a tricky scenario here where um, the previous MapReduce that I showed you, where we went in, parsed the document, and emitted, we can do it on the fly too. So what, what you're seeing here is um, an ability to go parse sections of their document and uh, um, find the occurrence of a specific uh, product cider in this example. So what we did in, uh, in the recursive parsing example in the, in the JavaScript can be done on the fly using um, uh, Nickel. So this um, you know, um, is a cool feature that is what uh, we thought when we were working on the query. And any, any BI um, engine or any, any analytics firm would want to know the top tens, right? So I wanted to s spend a little bit of time on um, this unnest capability. So like, um, uh, like I mentioned, we have heavy um, nesting structure, and we wanted to be able to, uh, from the nesting structure, we wanted to be able to surface any sections of the document, uh, like the JSON sections or the arrays of the document, to be able to surface them up and, and do aggregation on it. So this is a scenario where we wanted to find what our um, top 10 facts are, what are the most used facts within, within, uh, uh, by a client. So in this scenario, um, we had to traverse uh, at, at a level where you go from outer document, you have to scroll down to uh, identify each of the uh, dimensions, like if it's a market, product, period, or fact. And once you've found it's a fact uh, dimension, you have to drill further down and say, is your uh, fact is in third level or seventh level. So you have to parse all on the fly when you run a query. So the unnest uh, uh, collection capability gives you an ability to go down and go deep down till the, um, till the um, group level item being, the, being where the fact resides, be able to take that and uh, surface that and, and give us an aggregation. So what you see here is a uh, dollar fact being used uh, um, uh, 200 something times and uh, dollar a year ago being 86, so we, 86 times. So that, that's the, the power of uh, JSON parsing is now moved all the way to the, to the uh, data layer. So prior to having Nickel, we had to bring in some of these documents. We had to parse it ourselves in the Java layer. We don't have to do that anymore. Um, there are other, other capabilities, like you can look in and uh, you use this interface to find out what your... Uh, um, um, key spaces are, what your buckets are, your kinds of indices, and uh, um, what we have done is as we work through the uh, queries, we, we found a need to, um, uh, to build some uh, indexes. So the, the global secondary uh, index uh, comes in very handy. So on, on these buckets, they, if we wanted specific attributes that we know of that we are going to, that are going to be in our where clause, you can go in and build indices on it. So we built a, a few indices here to, to be able to make our query run um, um, in, in a subsequent uh, um, response time. 
So we have uh, regular indices, and there, there's also, you, you'll find something like a, a composite index, ability to create composite index, where you can find if, if more often than not, if you query by a combination of two attributes, you can put them together and, and uh, uh, build an index using that. Any questions so far before I go go further into our business gains and yeah. What two are competing for resources? Elastic search. No, they are they are running on totally two different clusters. Okay. So we. So you are not supporting both of them. No, we are not. No, no. So um, some of our gains, like we our our performance with uh, with the ability to do uh, um, uh, to meet the um, uh, metadata change management need, to be able to. Um, address the data refresh uh, use case. We are able to take advantage of the MapReduce, which brought our, uh, um, we, which got us very high throughput, and our, our performance is down to one fifth. So what, what the backend processes that used to run seven, eight hours um, earlier with when we were in relational paradigm parsing the, the um, uh, binary objects, uh, that's now down to like uh, two hours of uh, uh, processing window. Smart search with the uh, with the uh, ability to build a reverse index um, on uh, sections of the document or attributes of the document, we are able to uh, do a much uh, uh, smarter search on what the um, user create. Okay, that that looks <laughs> um, little. So the next is actually real real time insights by by ability to. Um, take the data from um, Couchbase and move it into into Elastic. We are able to um, get the with the audit data, which is almost near real time. We are able to get um, insights based on uh, user selections and audit data. Um, uh, we started off onboarding um, like a year or a year and a half before we started off with uh, um, 80 something clients onboarded to this platform. Now we are around uh, 450 with uh, very min minimal change uh, made to the cluster settings. And of course, the ad hoc querying capability to to basically enhance our uh, um, data insights or take take advantage of um, uh, the uh, nickel. Uh, where are we heading towards uh, uh, from here? L like I mentioned, um, after we are done with the uh, beta testing uh, initiative, we we look to upgrade our clusters to Foro. Where we can take advantage the multi advantage of the multidimensional scaling, and we also want to use uh, Nickel as our ad hoc uh, uh, querying platform. Um, we are we also looking to do like uh, we are um, mobile friendly application right now. We wanted to get our app certified for the uh, uh, certified for mobile devices, our uh, reporting application. That's uh, pretty much what I have here, so I'm, I'm open to questions now. We okay, so the first question, what kind of infrastructure are we on? Are we on on-premise or are we on the cloud? The answer is we are still on-premise. Uh, the second part is, are we on uh, physical uh, servers or are we on virtual servers? Yeah, we are on physical servers. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we have about uh, 10 buckets per uh, server. So we we are using it to the maximum uh, capacity, and uh, so the question was, how many buckets do you have in each node? And the answer is ten. And what was your second part? No, we 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 have uh, um, uh, the memory. What is the memory allocated to each bucket? Is it same? No, it, it is very different, and the replication is also quite different. So depending on the 
um, sensitivity of the data. Some buckets have uh, more replication factors than the other. How do we provision what? It's not, oh, okay. It's not that fancy, exactly. There's no DevOps fancy stuff in there. It, I think it's a unicast discovery, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Uh,